Hi, I'm Don Lloyd from Nightworks, and this is Hands in the Sea. It's a two-player card-driven war game, and it's based around uh, the First Punic War, which is wars back in 240 BC between Rome and Carthage. And the highlights of this game is that it's a card-driven game, and it has some similarities to a few acres of snow. And uh, that means that you'll be doing a lot of deck building in the game. So each side starts the game with different types of cards and they also start the game with uh, having certain cities and towns built up on the board. And how the game is set up now is almost exactly how it would be when you very first play and set up the game. So you'll notice that there's a lot of cities and towns already built up. Which means in this game, instead of starting from one central location and having to build across the board, there's conflict very early on in the game. Uh, a lot of the game revolves around attacking and defending in Sicily. So you'll notice that the Carthage and the Roman uh, locations are quite close to each other. So battle can happen right away. But to get more upon how the game really works, it's card driven. So for every location you have, you will physically have that card. So for example, this is Neapolis, so you will have this location somewhere, and then this, this card gives you different resources. So on this is a ship movement, it's three silver, it's a colonist symbol. So for example, if I wanted to colonize one of these locations, I'd have to have a card that had a colonist on it. If I wanted to move around the board with fleet movement, then I'd have to have a ship. If I wanted to pay for something, I could use this card for three silver. And that's also, you have different silver and gold that you have in the game to pay for things. So once again, you start the game with a very specific set of cards. So let's say, for example, this is how the Roman player would start out with. They would start out with these cards, and they would actually uh, pay for any other cards they want to build up their game. So if they want to either build out their deck or thin their deck, then they would do that based upon the decisions that the other side that they're facing. Say for example, the Carthage side builds a lot of warships and they're trying to pillage and raid with their fleet, then, then Rome may want to defend themselves and build up their naval side as well. So what, how you determine how you want to build out your deck is basically, uh, it's your decision. You also have a nice little player aid that helps you easily determine where you put different things. So this is your choice of cards that you can pull from in the Empire deck. You have your draw deck of your actual deck that you've paid for. Discard deck or reserve. You can put cards into reserve to pull them out more quickly, more easy. So say for example, I felt like I was going to be threatened. I want to put Roman legionnaires in reserve so they could come out quicker. I could do that. You have a couple battle spots for whenever there's a battle in the game, you go to a battle track. And here's one of the battle tracks for, say, the Roman side. Uh, there's a point at which there's a neutral area. So this gray area is neutral. All battles start at zero, and then you determine where the location is. So say, for example, there was a battle in this specific city or town. You'll notice that there's a sword here, so this is going to go up a little higher on the track. And then as players put more defense or attack into it, they'll just lay these cards down. So if the Rome player wanted to attack this area, they may put, two, may put this into the battle. You'll notice that this has two different swords on it, or attack symbols, so they would move one, two up on their battle track. And then they could continue to add cards to keep swaying the battle one way or the other. And then when it becomes the Carthage side, Carthage has to bring this back down to a neutral area or to their blue area. Otherwise, comes back to the Rome player's side, they've lost the battle. So it's a, it's a sway of back and forth of uh, this battle track. And it's, it's, it's similar to how a few acres of snow does this. So you have uh, this player aid to help you out with different areas that you can pull. There's different ways to end the game. So if you build out all of your towns or you build out all your cities, that's a trigger. If you defeat the capitals, so if Carthage comes across and defeats Rome, they'll win the game. There's also automatic victory conditions. If someone is ever 25 points ahead of the other player, it's almost a mercy killing, so the game will end immediately. If you ever hit 90, the game will end immediately. And uh, there's a couple other conditions. There's, a, there's an event card in the game that could end the, the game immediately. How this differs from a few acres of snow is in that there is events in the game. 
So at the end of each turn, a specific event will come out. So for example, this is Storms at Sea, and each event card has a condition where you have to roll a die to determine what side it, it, it affects. So on a one through two, this would affect the Carthage side. So these storms would affect, however it describes the event at the bottom, would affect the Carthage side. And there may be something like a mercenary revolt. And what's interesting about this is, is that different sides are susceptible to these events. So for example, Carthage uses a lot of mercenaries in their army. So mercenary revolt can hit on a one through four, whereas it only hits Rome on a five through six. So it's more likely to hit the person that, the, the empire that has that leaning against them. So there's different things that can happen there. Another interesting aspect is that there are strategy cards in the game. So each empire can have a specific strategy card that they can pay for. So for example, uh, if Carthage wanted to pay for Celtic allies, then they would pay for and uh, they would actually add this to their player aid. So there's a spot in here that is for a specific strategy card, and then that strategy card would be the only strategy card that they could have on that empire side. And if you want another strategy card, you have to flat out pay for it. So there's, there's one aspect of the game that's different. Another interesting thing is that you have this concept of the fleets, where you can actually move fleets around, and you can pillage and raid, you can block the supply. So, supply can be blocked based upon where the fleet is located. Rome was being attacked in this area, and the Carthage fleet was in this, in, in this sea zone, then they wouldn't be in supply, they would be blocked. So they couldn't add additional attack cards, and there would be some difficulties there. Otherwise, that in a nutshell is a quick overview of Hands in the Sea.